I'd like to uh, I'd like to address a few things, maybe get ahead of questions. Uh, one is yesterday in my remarks I talked about the orbital insertion burn, and I was I didn't I, I told you what I did know, but didn't have a complete understanding. Our best understanding 24 hours later now is, uh, or maybe maybe more, is our spacecraft needs to reach down into the Atlas V and figure out what time it is. Where where is the Atlas V in its mission profile? And then we set the clock based on that. Somehow we reached in there and grabbed the wrong spot. I don't. This this doesn't look like an Atlas problem. This looks like a we reached in and grabbed the wrong coefficient. More to learn there, but that's it's not more complicated than that. And we started the clock at the wrong time. As a result of starting the clock at the wrong time, the the spacecraft upon reaching space thought she was in a different. She thought she thought she was later in the mission, and being autonomous started to behave that way. Uh, and, and so it wasn't putting it wasn't in the orbit we expected without the burn, and it wasn't in the attitude expected, and was in fact adjusting that attitude. And so when you talk about I, yesterday, I talked about the delay we had in some minutes of of linking to the tracking data relay satellites, TDRS. We think that combination of getting between a couple satellites, but more so, we were moving the vehicle and not in the attitude to get an easy link. So we think that contributed to the delay. Again, a little more work to do, but we know more today. And so that is an unexplained and understood thing, not something we want to do again. But we designed the system to be able to hold on to Tetris all the time, and now we, we think we know why she didn't. We're in a circular orbit now, 250 by 250 kilometers. That's lower than we expected to be, but fine. And we chose that because it gives you the most uh, chances to come home while continuing to run tests. The vehicle status is really excellent. All our avionics systems are good. Our life support systems in the cabin all look great. Thermal management, power is neutral or better, meaning we're, you know, we're able to orient the spacecraft. We have full attitude control and can move it around. Uh, we have all the instruments working. In fact, we're able, as a matter of learning, remember this is a flight test, we're able to now start changing the red lines and, you know, we start real tight and we can move those around a little bit and we're doing that and making sure we learn as much as we can before the next flight. So that's very encouraging. And regarding data, we are just going to get an enormous amount of data. We're getting it now. We've established link with the space station, which is super important because we want the station to be able to take the vehicle when necessary. And we've also got uh, Rosie the Rocketeer in the vehicle and an anthropometric test dummy. And we have boxes in the vehicle that when we get, when she returns, another large pile of data about what happened in the cabin, what happened on the hull thermally, what happened structurally. So we're, we're real excited to collect, already collect an enormous amount of information. Entry, descent, and landing is not for the faint of heart, and this vehicle has not entered. We have not gone from space to the atmosphere. We have tested all the functions that you need after you get into the atmosphere during our pad abort test, but you know, don't make no mistake, we still have something to prove here on entry tomorrow.